Have you been finding it difficult to set up a one-to-one -one relationship in ASP.NET Core MVC? In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that using the latest .NET version .NET 9. But first, what is a one-to-one -one relationship? Let's say we have a list of items stored in our database and we want to connect each item with a single serial number. We also want that serial number to be assigned to only one item. In this case, they need to have a one-to-one -one relationship. This is what we will learn in this video and it's going to be super simple. We already have a project set up with the crowd operations and only an item model created, which we did in the previous video. You can find that video in the card on the screen or in the description below if you want to know how that works. Well, welcome to Code the Future. My name is Alan and I help you learn C Sharp and .NET on your own. Now let's get started. You can see that our item has only one ID, a name and a price. I'm just going to start with by seeing here that our name property in this case has this kind of error. The properties by default are declared as non-nullable and the compiler basically just wants to remind us that we haven't initialized the value for this property yet. Now, in some cases, we would want to like add the question mark after the property type, the error would go away. But in some cases, if we would not want our property to be null, for example, or that we can skip this error, we can just in give it an initial value here, like null with the exclamation mark. And basically this gives the name property a temporary null value. So just to remove this warning that the compiler gives us, we give it a temporary value where telling the compiler that we do not want our property to be null, but basically we will take care that we give it a value in the future. I hope that's not complex. And now back to our one-to-one -one relationship model, I'm going to need to create a new class in our models folder. I will name this serial number. And let's give it like a ID property. As you can see the integers and numbers usually don't take an error because they by default they can be null actually but if we will give the serial number a name as well and to escape this warning we'll give it an initial value here and now the, we're just going to need these two properties for the serial number alone but now to connect it to our item with a one-to-one -one relationship we're just going to need to connect it with an id for the ID of the item, I'll write it here, item ID. And also we'll specify here that this will be connected to an item model. And I'm gonna need to specify on top of this item property that the foreign key basically how we will connect this item, this property to the actual item is that we're going to use the item ID property. So we're using this date annotation to basically connect the item with our serial number using the item ID as a foreign key. And here I'm actually going to use the question mark on top of both of these properties because we want to, to make it easy for us that we do not have to connect the serial number with an item just as soon as we create this model. We can give it a value later on. We create firstly the model, let's say we create the item, and then afterwards we can connect it to a serial number and vice versa. So I'm just gonna, just gonna go to the models folder one more time, to the, I'm gonna go to the item model as well, and I'm gonna connect it to the serial number. I'm gonna need the uh, serial number, ID property and a serial number property named serial number. So basically what we're seeing here is that we will connect this model with a serial number, the item model, and we're going to use the serial number ID 
as the foreign key basically, but we do not need to specify this data annotation in both of our models. In one of them, it would, it's enough. And I'm going to set this to be nullable as well here, so that as I also said before, we do not have to specify the serial number ID just as soon as we create a new item model. Now that we have this clarified, let's just go to the context. I'm going to need a dbset instance for our serial number model. Serial number. I'll name it serial numbers in plural. For us to give some initial data to the an item and a serial number in our database, we can use here the we're going to need to override a method in that entity framework or provides us. So I'm just writing here, protect it, override, void, since the method won't provide anything that on model creating. And what this on model creating does here, this is like a method that entity framework or has, which takes a model builder class as the parameter, which is a class that will allow us to configure the uh, different configurations for our models and the relationships with them. So actually by default, there exists an on model creating class in entity framework or that configures our items, our models and the relationship between them by default, but now we are overriding it to specify either the data for our models when they are initialized or the relationship between them. So just inside this method here, what we're going to do to it, I'm going to use the model builder parameter, which was this class that we'll use to add configurations. And I'm going to write that entity. I'm going to write for the item first. So I'm just going to use a method has data here. Just the model has data here to give some data for a model, basically to create a model in our database for the item. How we can do this is I just need to write here new item. And I can, let's say, specify the ID to be like four. I don't know, it's a number. I don't know if I have an ID with an ID of one in my database. The ID is an integer, so no double quotations are needed. The name of our item, I'll set it like a microphone, I don't know, some item. And now I'm gonna add the serial number ID. Do I have a price for the items? I think I do. Okay, I'll set the price to be, I don't know, price to be $40 or something. And the serial number ID, which will be the ID of the serial number is, I'll input like a number here, like 10, and then I'll need to create a serial number with the ID of 10, so that these two models will be created. Just like I created an item in our database, I'm gonna create a serial number as well. So I'm just gonna need to write here serial number we're creating a new serial number. I will use the ID of 10 so that the first item will be connected to our serial number. I'll name it like, the name was a string, I guess. So I'll name it like Ike, like 150 or something, just some code, that just what could represent a serial number actually. And now I think the only property left is the item ID which I'll set it equal to four so that it will be connected to our first item. I want to quickly remind you that you can get my C-Sharp ebook on sale now. Whatever you are building in .NET, this book will be a valuable resource for everything C-Sharp related. You can find the link in the description if you're interested and let's get back to the video. After we have created two models in our database, we have the database instances here for the models tables to be created in our database. I'm just gonna need to go to package manager console and add the migrations. So add migration. 
I'm just writing here one to one so that we know for this migration we added a one to one relationship in our database. You can name it whatever. Hit on enter. Okay, now we just need to update this migrations, this database schema that was created here to the database. Everything seems to be done correctly. Now, I'm, so that we show this on the screen, actually, I'm just going to go to our contacts, to our index page. And when we load the items from our contacts, we need to specify here that we want to access the serial numbers as well. We just gonna need to write an include method after we access, after writing contacts.items, after accessing items in our context. And after that, writing here include, just gonna need to get the variable here and access with it the serial number. Now that we can have access to the serial numbers from our items, we can go to the index page. and also display the serial number in a column. So here like in the table he header, the table header, just write here serial number and we'll access it from the database here by just writing item dot serial number that name of the serial number. We can just run our application now and go to the index page. Let's go here to slash index slash items, the name of the controller slash index. Now we are getting an error here while processing this in our index page. And the error is actually happening because we have specified this serial number in the item that it could be null. For us to avoid this, we can just give a question mark after accessing the serial number here from the database. And in case it is null, nothing will be displayed in that column. If not, we'll access the name of the serial number. Let me just run the application one more time. And here we should see a microphone priced $40 and the serial number is mic150. So we have connected the microphone with a one-to-one -one relationship with a serial number and actually vice versa as well. And if we would try to, we cannot connect this serial number with another item actually. Even if we would try to do this either in the context or in our database, this would give us an error. And the first item actually here, we haven't connected it to a serial number yet. That's why this column is empty for the moment. If you found this video helpful, make sure to watch the next one, which should appear on the screen to learn how to perform the crowd operations when the models have a one-to-many relationship. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons for more content like this. And I'll see you in the next one.